there isn't necessarily one nutrition professional that's recognized above the rest, right? So people know that doctors are trustworthy sources of information, and then there's registered dietitians who are trained to work in the Western medicine model, right? And so the training for dietitian is really about being a healthcare professional and learning how to stay in your lane, work in a hospital, work in a community setting. And uh, you know, there's a lot of space for other people to get involved in nutrition. And I think in the social media world, the people that really want to build their image online are people that have uh, a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of personal experience to do so. So there's been this feeling in my field where dietitians are often upset that uh, other people are moving in on the nutrition space, whether it be a chiropractor or an acupuncturist or a personal trainer. And I, I came up in the field and I watched a lot of my colleagues just be mad. There was on the listservs, they were like, I'm so upset that this chiropractor gave this client of mine this bad diet or the trainer weighed their body fat and asked them to get on this restrictive diet. and. There was all this angst in my field. People were so upset that, you know, registered dietitians weren't, you know, the uh, recognized nutrition professional the way that we were trained to be, right? I think people like extremes. People like pushing the limit, especially when it comes to health. There's this big trend toward biohacking and people want to find out how good can I feel? Whenever you make real change, you're gonna feel different. And when people start to feel different and feel better, it creates momentum and they want to keep doing it and keep feeling better. So, you know, for example, if someone's on a plant-based diet and they've been vegan for three years, uh, sometimes if someone can run into some health challenges like micronutrient deficiencies and when they start eating some animal products again, they actually start to feel different or better. Similarly, people that eat a lot of junk food and eat burgers and eat a lot of animal products, when they go vegan, they start to feel better. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like any change can affect the way someone feels. And when someone feels better, they get excited and they want to keep feeling better. So that's, that's why they go into that extreme is because they get that little snippet of like, oh, I feel better, so I'm going to go all in. Is yeah. that, do you think that's why? I, I think people also want to maximize their experience living on the planet, right? And when, um, when someone's susceptible to extremes, they're more likely to, to sway to other extremes. So for example, a lot of times when someone will go on, let's say a carnivore diet, right? For six months, they're feeling better. They're telling the whole world about it. I'm only eating meat. Don't eat any vegetables. It's bad for you, that sort of thing. Uh, but the real question is, is like, okay, then what, right? What happens after six months? What happens after one year? Some people say I can stay keto or I can stay um, on a specific diet for the rest of my life, but usually it ends at some point. I mean, if you think about health, it's super broad, right? We have mental health, emotional health, physical health, and even the space of physical health includes, you know, food, sleep, you know, exercise, stress management, right? And so for one person, changing their diet could have been the key to unlocking their true health potential. And for the next person, they make a couple dietary changes and it doesn't feel like it was that big of a revolution. So maybe nutrition is more relevant for some people than it is for others. Some people can get into eating differently and start to feel less anxiety, less depression. Other people start eating differently and start to feel growth in their muscles. There's so many different things that can change for different people. One of the biggest challenges with nutrition is that it doesn't come across as a hard science, right? Hard sciences are things like math and chemistry and nutrition is super vague and it's hard to quantify, but there's been incredible efforts in quantifying nutrition by creating calories, macronutrients, things that you can measure. In science and in medicine, we need measurable outcomes. So a big push to advance the field of nutrition was to start quantifying things, start looking at you know, uh, basal metabolic rate, thinking about how many calories someone's eating, how many grams of protein, and it lent itself to uh, quasi-scientific models where people could actually get really clear nutrition advice. And that became the mainstay, especially for example, if someone works in a hospital, someone has um, a liver condition, they need to be really 
deliberate about how many grams of protein they're eating. If someone has kidney failure, they need to think about certain electrolytes. There's just some really clear, nuanced, scientific things that nutrition calls for. However, in the real world, right, um, people have confused nutrition for this big math problem. And I think in the real world, like someone could come to me and say, you know, I want to know how many grams of protein to eat per day. And that's an easy thing that I could tell someone. You know, I could say, okay, you probably need somewhere between this range. But in reality, um, you know, they could easily go just below that range or just above that range and be fine, right? And then what it lends itself to is people really believing that they can optimize their health and wellness by using the math. And then all the apps came out and people really started to uh, look at nutrition as fuel, just calories. And I think it misses a big picture of what food really represents. Food represents a profound interaction with nature. And we have, it's our chance to connect with the earth and to connect with source energy. And uh, a lot of the stuff I taught in school was focused on learning how to prescribe diets for medical conditions, right? But people come into my office and they don't have a medical condition, they have binge eating. They have body image issues. They have a lot of depressive symptoms and they need to eat in a way that can help them feel better about themselves. And that doesn't necessarily necessitate that they calculate grams of anything. It might just mean learning how to connect to food and take better care of themselves, go to the grocery store, learn how to cook their food and celebrate health versus thinking of it as some sort of pass fail thing. You gotta do this or you gotta do that. I think it's one of the major themes in our world today is that people are looking for ways to conserve energy, right? Be more efficient and convenience is king now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one of the major ways that the food industry has really moved in on uh, people's relationship to food. They've basically marketed, you don't have to do any of the effort, we'll do it for you, right? Forget about making a meal, get a frozen dinner, right? Forget about cooking food, come through the drive-thru, the food's already made, we'll have you fed, and the trash will be in the trash can within 12 minutes, right? Yeah. And that really appeals to the mind, especially if we're overworked. So convenience has completely changed our relationship to food, and people don't give any foresight to what they're gonna eat, because you know you can order something on an app, you know that you can order food uh, 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 through a drive-thru. And I do believe that the real solution to a lot of our nutritional woes is to get people going to the grocery store again, learning how to cook their own food, learning how to um, assemble food. Not everyone's gonna become a cook, right? I was like, let's be realistic. There's some people that have gone through their whole life and they never cooked a meal. So they come into my office and they're 30 years old and I'm like, let's make, um, you know, something real simple like roasted Brussels sprouts, right? And even that could feel daunting. It creates a lot of anxiety. So sometimes you don't have to do the full cook thing. Maybe just assemble some things, buy something that's already pre-made, make one thing and bring it all together. But in my experience working with people for over 10 years, 10,000 hours of nutrition counseling, getting people to get their hands dirty a little bit, going to the grocery store and connecting with food, isn't just about controlling the ingredients and improving the actual nutrition, but it helps people feel like food is an embedded part of their lives rather than something that they've completely outsourced to the industry. 